prelude things. It's always a damn Christmas tree. All right, let's do this. Welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about the prelude. I did a video last on the wheel fitment for my F30, but I figure this is my true kind of stance car. I wish, or it's kind of twisted because the F30 is on air, but this has nicer wheels, but it's static. So I don't know, take it as you will. But this is more my fitment car, my stance car, I guess. I, I just sound stupid saying that. A lot of work and time went into fitting these wheels. In fact, way more time and effort than fitting the F30 wheels. So that's why I wanted to make this video is for the third geners out there. I spent so many hours trying to figure out what is the freaking biggest wheel, the widest wheel I can fit without having to do too much fabrication to the fenders in order to get a reasonable ride. So this is what I ended up with. <laughs> These are my 17 inch heritage wheel Emolas is the name of the wheel. This one's about a three inch polished lip. The rear is a three and a half inch polished lip. And I went with just the, um, it's not brushed aluminum, but it's just like a satin aluminum finish on the faces, which I think looks really good paired with the gold hardware. And then I went ahead and put on some Muteki gold extended lug nuts. So I'll have those linked down below if you guys want to check them out. I know the gold ones are kind of out of stock right now and hard to find, but they have a bunch of other colors that might work with your wheel. As many of you or all of you third gen Prelude guys watching this video right now, you know that there is practically no content on these cars anywhere, especially on YouTube. You can find forums filled with like 10 year old forum posts covering a lot of information on these cars, but even 10, even five years ago, I feel like guys were not slamming these, trying to get the best fitment out of them. There was just a different world back then. So nowadays, this is what fitment I think looks good, and this is what I was shooting for, but I couldn't find any information on this type of fitment. So I wanted to bring that to you guys today. Like I was saying, 17 inch, 17 inch. It is a three piece wheel, it's a real three piece wheel so heritage wheel made these and they are their own designs they're not reps so if you guys are interested in picking up any real three piece wheels or they do have mono block as well you guys can check them out it's it's a pretty reasonable price for what you're getting and i mean these were a pretty penny but i think they just make this car look so much better these are four by 100 so for you Honda guys, um, that should be nothing new. They are not on any spacers, so both the front and the rears are not on spacers. This is just how the fitment is, which if I go out to the side here and kind of show you what the poke looks like, then you can kind of get a feel of what I'm running. Um, it's even, I think with a little more camber, it will look perfectly flush with that fender. So I don't really regret going this big on the wheels. I just need to figure out the front camber and a little bit more in the rear camber situation, but this is how it came out in the rear. I'll get you guys the same angle. So right there. So you can tell, I mean, it pokes. I would actually probably run a little bit of a lesser tire on this with a little more stretch just to uh, kind of clear things and make clearance a little bit easier, but that's how the rear sits. And now the wheel specs. So like I said, 17 inch wheels, the fronts are a nine and the rears are a nine and a half inch wide wheel. And I went with that because I wanted to rock a staggered look, which if you guys just watched my last F30 video, we just covered all this. So it is staggered. I did a little bit bigger in the back, a little bit smaller in the front, just on the lip. So I built these wheels in the fronts. The offset is a plus 20 and in the rears, it's a plus 15. So it is a little bit more sucked in in the back, which gives it that more staggered look. So what they did when I had them build these wheels was actually put the extra space, that extra half inch on the lip. So basically, and this is kind of hard to explain on camera, but the inner barrels are the same size. It's just the outer lip that they pushed out to give it that staggered look. Now I did just lower the car even more. So the fronts are actually maxed out. I have a hairpin of space that I can go down on the fronts before I end up having to take out the locking collars on the coilovers, which I'm not too ten intent on doing. So right now I just basically left a hairpin space on the front coilovers, just that way the bottom locking ring doesn't seize up. But these are practically maxed out and um, if I had a choice, I would say I wish we could go lower again with this tire setup. I think I would need to actually run a little bit lesser of a tire, a little more stretch to get that clearance because right now it's um, it's pretty close to the fender and like I do hit the uh, fender guard or the fender well liner just a little bit. So not ideal, but it's definitely still drivable. The back's pretty much clear though. So the backs are 
pretty well sized as far as the tire goes. Again, I might go in a little bit just because of this lip right here. If I do go over bumps, occasionally it will hit right here. The fender will come down and just hit the tire a little bit. But that's only on really, really massive bumps. Outside of that, this car does not really scrape at all. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I'm missing. Oh, I did have to roll the fenders. So the all four fenders are rolled a little bit. It's not extreme. Let me actually go to the brighter side, although the sun is starting to go down. Maybe that's a little bit better. But if you can, it's so slight. It's ever so slight, but just enough that it really made a huge difference because before I had to be about, oh my gosh, I had to be two fingers above the tire. So you can see how much pulling the fenders allowed me to go a lot lower. Again, just to give you a reference point, I had to be pretty much right up there with the bottom of the fender before otherwise and it would still scrape actually I don't I take that back not otherwise it still scraped at that ride height and same deal in the back until I was able to roll the fender just a little bit this thing was basically sitting right on the tire it was so bad and I would have had to uh, run a pretty insane uh, lifted looking prelude for a while or at least um, for the remainder of the time until I figured out that I could just pull the fenders just enough to allow me to go lower and funny enough with these cars is when you go lower or not funny enough but you actually gain a lot of camber so the more low you go the more camber you get the more the top of that wheel gets sucked in so it was really just a matter of pulling the fender just enough to allow me to break that point where i could just go a lot lower because of the camber that was going to allow me access to uh, that ride height wow that was a lot okay um next thing i wanted to talk about is camber actually which but in a different sense so there's no real upper control arms after market for these cars or camber adjustment there are some ones that were made back in like the early 2000s don't think they actually make them anymore and if you're finding any they're used so i did find a couple online but before i went and bought them used i read the reviews and honestly the reviews were pretty sketchy guys saying that the pieces broke on it that they didn't really work that well it was rattly so um no adjustable at least in my eyes no adjustable upper control arms exist for this car so what uh my buddy's actually doing right now and i won't blow him up just yet until he is either successful or figures out how to be successful at doing this but he picked up some spare upper control arms that he's gonna try to basically take the holes that are in there for the bolts and uh, just elongate them because in my last video where I showed you adjusting the upper control arms you do have a little bit of play to give yourself some more camber but he's basically gonna try and dig out some more metal so that way the bolt will go in even further and then obviously give you more camber so stay tuned for that I'm waiting to see how his comes out first and then I'm gonna go hunting for a set of used upper control arms for this thing to see if I can make that happen because if I can get this thing even more slammed and still maintain that drivability, I love it. I love seeing this old 80s car just slammed on the ground. I think it looks so awesome. Before I forget, tires. So I'm running Federal 595s. They are not the super high-end one. I forget if it's like the RS or something like that, but it's just your generic Federal 595. So I run a 205 4017 on the fronts and that is what that stretch looks like so you can basically see some lip there but it's not a lot i mean it's really not an aggressive stretch i haven't had any issues with leaking yet or anything like that knock on wood so in the backs i'm running actually a 215 40 17. so i think the backs are a little less stretched um, there's a little less barrel showing so like i said room for improvement this is a very mild stretch it was my first attempt at stretch and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Still got some meat on those tires. Keeps it very drivable. But I freaking love this car. It's just so cool. And now that I'm seeing it slammed, it's just even better. I can't believe how far this car has come in literally 12, uh, 11 months. It hasn't even been a full year of ownership yet. And this thing has just changed so much. So I guess that pretty much covers it as far as wheels. I mean, I gave you guys the fitment. I gave you guys... The wheel brand i give you guys the tire setup the wheel sizes so i hope that helps any of you guys who are looking to stance out your third gen prelude you know there's obviously room for improvement if you wanted to go even wider just more fabrication would be needed i mean it's definitely doable anything is possible but that's kind of where i wanted to draw the line going for that oem plus look on this honda just trying to restore it make it look cool slammed drivable all that good stuff. Just an update on the Prelude. Um, really kind of at a loss right now on what I want to tackle next on this car. So there's some little things like I got to finish painting the trim around the windows. I have to, I want to paint the calipers on it, but 
the big things that I want to tick off on the list are going to be figuring out the paint situation, wrapping it, painting it, something. I just want this car to look all one color again. You guys probably can't tell, but the roof, yeah, you probably can't tell, but the roof is so sun damaged, uh, sun bleached from just sitting out in Tennessee for God knows how long. Just looking for a refresh on this thing, but I can't make up my mind on what exactly I want to do with it yet. The other thing I need to start working on, which will again pertain to what color I choose to do on the outside, but I really want to get rid of this blue interior. This blue interior just, uh, it gives it a really cool 80s feel, but I think as far as style goes and just, I don't like it. I don't really like what someone did here with some really obnoxious blue paint. I mean, the carpeting is all weathered. It all just needs to get at least refreshed. But while I'm at it, I was thinking about doing the whole thing in black. So eventually I want to get some bride seats or maybe some Recaros or something in here, which if you guys know what will fit, basically what will fit height wise and what will work as far as seat brackets please put that down in the comments because i have been looking but uh anyways i was thinking about doing the whole interior black so i would basically have to disassemble all the dash the doors everything i would rewrap the headliner obviously everything you see tan would then be black so that's kind of what's on my to-do list right now like I said, I wanted to figure out what I was gonna do with the exterior first because um, depending what color, I don't wanna go and start the interior. Then again, black does go with everything, but knowing me, I'm gonna throw some accent color in there and I don't wanna pick everything, pick my colors yet until I know what the outside's gonna look like. So what do you guys think? I really like the dark look on this car. I think the dark wheel, I mean the, sorry, the dark paint with the lighter wheels looks really good. I also have been really thinking about doing like an off white for this car, like a cream almost. I think this car in, uh, in that color just looks very 90s still, looks very old school JDM. But I'm curious, what color would you do on this Prelude? It's, um, you know, still got good paint, which is really unfortunate. I would actually honestly keep this color if the roof wasn't so bad and there weren't so many little just imperfections in it i mean somebody just got lazy with it and was trying to paint correct with a crayon or or something but this stuff this type of stuff is all over the car and it honestly looks great when you step back it's just that up close stuff and i don't know if it's really worth it going to respray the whole car i might just do a wrap until i can afford to get it really really get a really really nice paint job oh one other thing i want to talk about I don't know what to do with this trunk situation. So if you guys are caught up on my videos, this car, when I bought it, I didn't realize it, but it has a rusty uh, trunk. So if I open this up, this is what it looks like right now. And uh, before I go into that, the issue that I've tracked down is definitely the taillights. So they do not seal. I've tried resealing them. I've tried all sorts of stuff, but I think like the plastic here and even on the outside here is not sealed. So even though the taillight is sealed to the body of the car, they're still collecting water and somehow it's still basically pooling up in here where all the bulbs are and then dumping out into the trunk. So just to show you real quick what I'm working with, try and move this out of the way. So you can see the amount of rust in here. Um, this side's not too bad. This whole area is pretty bad. I mean, look at this, like there's just a hole here that you can, open up for sure um anyways there's another hole here that i've just filled with foam just to basically do whatever that's going to do um but you can see more rust there more rust there and another hole right there so my question to you is what do you guys recommend i do with this my worst nightmare would be to have to take it to a body shop basically have them cut out this whole trunk and like put new metal in there i'm not sure if it's to that point if there's any auto guy, uh, auto body guys in this uh who are watching this video right now please let me know what your thoughts are on it i was i've been told to just hit the whole thing with bed liner basically get some scrap metal just to fill in these holes and then just hit the entire thing with bed liner but my concern with that is yes it would look a lot better but would the rust continue to spread underneath the bed liner so i mean i don't mind just hitting this entire thing with bed liner you know coat it to the max and even do the bottom coated to the max so it's you know on both sides but my question is is this rust going to continue to spread so put it down in the comments what do you guys think what would be the best resolution for this trunk and then once we get that done i mean this prelude is back to a very good condition um not perfect not showroom but it's much better than you would see on most 88 so that's really the only thing that's kind of where i'm headed with this car right now if you guys have any comments or ideas for this car some topics that you want me to cover or mods you want to see me do to it 
please put it down in the comments just for anybody who's all about the power and engine swaps and stuff yes engine swap tranny swap it's all on the list waiting for this one to die out first it's perfectly good working so i don't want to necessarily replace it yet but if there's any other little mods you want to see on this car anything you have questions on put it down in the comments as always thank you so much for watching keep elevating and i'll see you next time peace out